this evening, oh Father Lord. And Father, as we continue, King of Kings, draw near to your table. We pray that you come and be with us, oh Father Lord. We give you the praise. In Jesus' awesome name we pray. And somebody shouts amen. Let's appreciate, let's appreciate these wonderful vessels. Come on. Come on. Tonight, thank God you are here. Mm. This is your night. This is your night of deliverance. This is your night of healing. Oh, listen, after today, your life will never be the same again. After tonight, your life is not going to be the same again. This is your night. This is your hour. This is your season. Tonight, hallelujah, we are about to get to the table of the Lord. We are about to get Holy Communion, but tonight I want you to approach the table of God with a difference, with a purpose, knowing that something spectacular is happening in your life forever. Hallelujah. 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 Tonight I will be speaking under a subject I've called no, I am no longer a slave. No longer a slave. No longer a slave. Hallelujah. I am no longer a slave. Somebody say it with conviction. I. I. Now say it like you are here. I. I. Am no longer a slave. Why? Because Jesus Christ, our Passover lamb, has been crucified. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for the entrance of your word brings light. King of kings, come and illuminate this word to somebody. Come and illuminate the Passover to somebody in this place. Father, I am praying that no man, no woman, no boy and girl will leave this place the same way they entered here. Father, you will transform. Father, you will heal. Father, you will deliver in the name above every name. Come with me to Exodus chapter 12. Tonight we are talking about the Passover. Somebody say Passover. <laughs> say it with conviction, Passover. Hallelujah. Death will pass you over. Sickness will pass you over. Death will pass you over. Troubles will pass you over. Tonight, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Exodus chapter 12. If you are there, just go for or sneeze so I know you are there. Can I thank you very much for coming out tonight, every one of you. May God bless you for coming out tonight. Let me tell you, Good Friday is one of the most important calendars in a Christian's life. If I'm a Christian, wherever I am, I must be in church to thank God for him, for his son, for his precious gift. Sat there. You are sat there because of tonight. If Jesus Christ had chickened out of tonight, he wouldn't be here. And we know it was not easy. Just like we read in the in, uh, Pastor Jesus led us in reading earlier in the Garden of, Garden of Gethsemane. It was not easy. It was hard. It was difficult. Jesus Christ tried to bargain to get out of this. Hallelujah. You must understand. You sat there. You sat there cost somebody a life. Me standing here to preach and speak this word costs, oh my God. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus the son of God. He's born on Christmas Day. Not the Christmas Day we celebrate. There's a different, you know, that, was, that, that day was put there by, by men. But on the real, real day that he was born, he was born of a Virgin Mary. Jesus grew up as any other boy. Ran up and down, played the tapo, played all those sorts of games. Played football. Grew up in a, in a household of a carpenter. Did all the trade because the father had to train the young boy. You know, some people would come and, you know, you know how carpenters, when, when you get many orders and you can't fulfill all the orders on time. And I can believe that sometimes the, 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 people, the customers would come to the workshop and find Joseph not there. And they would find Jesus and they would, you know, throw hell upon him. Where is my table? Where is my chair? And Jesus Christ would say, but you know, you know, we have had many orders, you know, so, so bear with us, all sorts of things. At age 
30, what happened to him? At age 30, what happened to Jesus? What happened to Jesus? Something spectacular happened. What was that? Speak up if you believe yourself. Come on, believe in yourself and speak up. He was baptized. That marked hmm? a new era in his ministry, in his life. He was baptized. And once he was baptized and immersed in the water, as he came out of the water, what happened? The heavens opened. And the Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove. And on that day, he became the Christ. He became Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, what was happening was Jesus, the man, was fighting with Jesus, the, with Christ, the anointing. Amen. He was 100% man. He was 100% God. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, the man, because God, he being God, he had already played the, the tape for the next day. The next few days, he knew what was going to happen. And therefore, there was a tug of war. He said, God, he happened to go into this, into, into this, uh, into this Garden of Gethsemane. By the way, every one of us, you will have your own Gethsemane. Trust me, you will have, if you haven't tested it. Some, some of us here are in the Garden of Gethsemane. Like, the, like Pastor Joy said earlier, you, there are some things you must go through. There are some things you must go through. Hallelujah. Gethsemane had to happen, and he was crying, God, is, th is there no other way? Is there no other way? For three times he prayed. And the heavens were silent. He prayed so hard that he began to sweat blood. That was awesome prayer. If you pray in this place, if I catch one, one, of, this place, in the, one of these days praying in this place and there is, you know, you, you begin sweating blood, I will give up. You know, I'll just, oh my God, this, is, this, girl, is, this girl has gone very far. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But heaven was silent. He had to go through all this. He had to go all through, through all this. And we thank God that he went through it. Amen. Our Passover lamb, Jesus Christ, was crucified for you and me. And because of that, I am forever free. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, now if you are clapping, clap as though you came with your hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 12, like I said, let's go quickly because time is fast spent. And uh, I appreciate you. I was, I was still appreciating you for coming in the presence of God on a night like this one. Some of you have traveled miles and miles. And it is good that you are here. And the Lord is here for you already. Amen. Amen. Chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month, can I prophesy to somebody? This month, tonight, tonight is, marks a new beginning in your life. Tonight, there is a demarcation. I speak this under the unction of the anointing of God as the servant of the Most High God. I speak it into your life as a new beginning in your life in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. A new chapter. I hear a chapter is being closed and another one is being opened for you tonight. This month, he said, shall be your beginning of months. You know, with God, like I told you earlier, God's calendar is not our calendar. Who told you that, that, that this, the, the year begins in January? Who told you? Who told you? Somebody's year can begin in January. Another's year can begin in February. Another one can begin in, it does not matter. As long as God says this is your beginning, it becomes your beginning there and then. Tonight is your beginning. Tonight is your beginning. You will testify about tonight. This shall be the beginning of months. Not one month, of months. It shall be the beginning of many things in your life. In the name above every name. It shall be the first month of the year to you. To you. In other words, other people also had the beginning of the year. But this one was, is, uh, this one is specific for me. Let me preach to me. Let me preach to me. I will watch this step later. I will listen to this step later. If, if, I'm, if you are selling it, I will also buy it. Hallelujah. This is the beginning of the new beginning for me. Hallelujah. 
I don't know what has been holding you. I don't know what your, your, life, your life has been all about. But tonight, there is a chapter that has been closed. Hallelujah. It is crystal clear. Hallelujah. It is crystal clear. It is closed. It is closed. It is closed. There is a name by which you have been known. Tonight, no more. After tonight, no more. After tonight, no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's newness. I speak newness. Newness. God is, is instituting the Passover in this portion of Scripture. A Passover marks a new beginning. It marks a new beginning. It marked a new beginning for the Jews who, have been, who had been bound where? In Egypt for many years. For many years. When the Lord liberates you from bondage, my friend, it's a new door. It's a dawning of a new day and the beginning of a new life. I speak a dawning of a new day and the beginning of a new life. This is a new day. Thank God you did come tonight. You can never be the same again, ever. 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 In the New Testament, we speak about redemption. Redeem, redemption. Passover is about redemption. Redeemed. Somebody say redeemed. Redeemed. Hallelujah. That word, the Greek word for that, for, for redeemed, is exagorazo. Powerful word. Just listen to that word, exagorazo. It comes from the word agorazo. Now, in the old days, we know about slavery. Slavery and the slave market. Now, people would trade in people because people wanted servants. So somebody would come and buy a slave. It would be a market. Just like we go in, in where you come from, we go to market where there are cows, where people are selling cows. So you look at every, whichever cow you want. You look at it, this, this one's not good. I don't like, you know, I don't like uh, the, 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 the color. I don't like the horns. I don't like, you know, you begin. So that's what was happening in such a market. People would come and they would actually be looking at people. People would be uh, put on platforms and these guys would look and this one is not good. They would open their mouth, open your mouth. Imagine that degradation. Hmm? Now, somebody who's, who's rich would want a servant, of course, to go and work in his plantation or whatever. Now, they would buy them out of the, from the market and take them to use them. That was agorazo. He buys so that he can reuse or employ, in fact, misuse this person. But then the word exagorazo takes it far. Exagorazo is this kind of man who comes to this market hmm? where they are selling people, where people are lined up. And for him, he says, hmm. He begins to look around. So, give me three. I'm buying three of them. And he's buying them off the market and saying they must never be on the market again. I am buying them to f make them free. That is exagorazo. And what Jesus Christ did at, the, at Calvary, my friend, he exagorazoed me and you. Yes. Hallelujah. No more to be slaves. Freedom. I am free. Tonight is somebody's freedom. Freedom. Redemption. Freedom from slavery. We continue with the text. Forgive me, I'm so worked up here. We'll be moving to and fro. Hallelujah. I'm enjoying myself. I don't know about you tonight. Why? Because I am confident that I, my day has changed. I am confident that my life has changed. I am confident that this is my season. I am entering into a new dispensation. How many want to enter with me into this new season? Come on! Put your hands up. Hallelujah. Mm. He says, speak, number three, speak to all the congregation. This is the first time we are in, in the scriptures, in the Pentateuch. This is the first time we are coming across this word congregation. Mm. Congregation later on come in the New Testament it becomes ecclesia. Talks about a community. Speaking, talking the whole community. Ecclesia talking about that's where we get the word church. Congregation. They come together and speak to all of them. Speak the congregation of Shiloh Tabernacle. Tell them this. 
One tenth. On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a what? A lamb. Somebody say lamb. What for? According to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons, according to each man's need. You shall make your, your count for the lamb. Continue. Your sheep shall be without blemish. What is happening today, on, on what happened on Calvary, what happened at Calvary was a mirror of what happened, was, was not, not a mirror, it was the replay of what happened in Genesis, Exodus chapter 12. Are we together? Yes. The, it had to be without blemish. The lamb, Jesus Christ is our lamb, is the lamb that was crucified because of you and me. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 7, we hear Isaac asking for the lamb. 22 verse 7, he says, But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here, here I am, son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the firewood. But where is the lamb for, the, for a burnt offering? Where is the lamb? And we find the answer in John chapter 1 verse 29. When after Jesus Christ has been baptized, what does he say? In fact, before he's baptized. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the what? The sins of the world. The evangelist Philip talks about him in Acts chapter 8, verse 32 to 35, as he's ministering to the who? To the eunuch. Guys, be sharp in your word, guys. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. He says, now the passage of scripture that was reading was this. He found this guy reading a scripture. Who? The eunuch. This is what he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. Who was led to the slaughter? Jesus. And like a lamb, before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth like we sang here earlier. Forever you are what? My redeemer. Are we together? In his humiliation, Jesus, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For this life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, about whom I ask, does the prophet say about this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with his, this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus Christ. The apostle Paul spoke about Jesus Christ in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. What does he say? Cleanse out the old living that you may be made a new lamb. As you are already, as you, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, you, our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Christ, our what? Passover lamb has been sacrificed. First Peter 1, 18 to 20. Another apostle. For you know that you were not redeemed from your useless, spiritually unproductive way of life, hmm? inherited by tradition from your forefathers with the perishable things like silver and gold. But you were actually purchased with precious blood, like that of a sacrificial lamb, unblemished and spotless, the priceless blood of Jesus Christ, for he was foreordained before the foundations of the world, but has appeared publicly in these last days for your sake. Revelation, John talks about him, five, chapter 5, verse 5 to 6. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are all the seven spirits of God who sent out into the world. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, he says, And all who dwell on the earth will worship it. Will worship the what? The lamb. Everyone whose name has been written where? 
in the found, before the foundation in the, of the world, in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. Right now, how many of us are, are born again here? If you, you profess to be born again, you have been, you're not written in the book of, 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 of just, you're written in the book of the Lamb who was slain before the foundations of the earth. Jesus Christ, our Passover Lamb. So in Exodus chapter 5, he tells them, they must make sure it is without blemish, this lamb that they are, talking, they are, going, they are going to sacrifice. In other words, it had to be examined. It had to be examined to make sure there's, there's no spot, there's no wrinkle, it's not in, injured. You know, God does not want blemished stuff. When you are bringing an offering to him, do not bring to him just something that is useless. He wants the best. He wanted the best. And that's why he had to send his best. Hallelujah. Amen. He wants the best. That's why he sent his best, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus, our Passover lamb, my friend, he met all the requirements of being blemished, of, of, of being uh, unblemished. And we find this in First Peter chapter 2, verse 22. He says, he committed no sin. Neither was deceit found in his mouth. We also know this, as we said earlier, when Jesus Christ was emerging out of the water, what did God say when he opened the heaven? What did he say? Say it, say it, out, say it out loud. This is my beloved son, uh -huh, in whom I am well pleased. He is well pleased in him. Why? Because he is without blemish. Hallelujah. He is without blemish. First John chapter 3, according to the Amplified, it says, You know that he appeared in visible form as a man in order to take away our sins. And in him there was absolutely no sin, for he has neither the sin nature nor has he committed sin or acts worthy of blame. Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen, was the perfect lamb of God. Verse 6. In Exodus chapter 12, re remain there. The rest of the verses I will be reading, for we are going to be in Gen Exodus chapter 12. Keep there. Verse 6. Now you shall keep it. Keep the what? That lamb. After identifying it, it was separated from the rest of the flock. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you must keep it until the 14th day. Oh, what are they doing all this time? They are, you know, they, they are listening to, 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 you know, once you are isolate. A lamb or a, or a cow from the rest of the flock, what will it do? You think it will be happy? No. So what will it be doing all the time? It will be bleating. The lamb will be bleating. And this bleating would, 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 would make noise in their ears and they would remember, they would keep remembering the reason why it has been separated. So in other words, draw them to the cause of the separation, to the cause of the Passover. Hallelujah. Then the whole assembly of God, of, of, then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight, meaning in the evening. When evening came, what happened? Every family went and killed this, this lamb. Are we together? Mm -hmm. The next verse. And they shall take some of the blood. Some of the what? The blood, the key word here is the blood. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorposts and on the lintels of the houses where they eat it. Just picture that. They've just killed the lamb. And after killing the lamb, they, 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 they would gather the blood, something like basins, whatever. And then they would, the father would call the children, come, 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 let me, let's go out there. And they would start applying the blood of the lamb. Ladies and gentlemen, the blood of the lamb, or let me put it this way, the lamb was more useful to the children of Israel dead than alive. Jesus Christ was more useful to us dead than alive in that day. Because it's in his, it's in his death that we draw power. It's in his death that we draw life. 
That was the day and night that death was conquered, that death had to surrender. Death had to surrender to the master of life, to the life. He says, I am the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection. Where there is death, when resurrection happens, when it comes, death has no, has, ha, 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 has no option but to give up. It's like darkness. If I ask somebody to turn off all these lights right now, what will happen? What happen? It will be darkness. But if you flick on the switch, what will happen? Darkness has to flee because light has come. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for the Lamb of God, the Lamb that was uh, slain in, uh, uh, on, on that evening, the children of God would not have been saved. Hallelujah. That's what he says in Hebrews chapter 22 and Leviticus 17, 11. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Hallelujah. Some people claim to admire the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, but they don't want the cross of Jesus. You cannot admire the teachings of Jesus Christ and hate the cross. The cross is your best friend. The cross is your best friend whose power never perishes, whose power never dwindles. Why? Because it is on the death on the cross, his death on the cross, that paid the price for your redemption. You, Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew chapter 20, 28. Even as the son came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom to many. When, some, when, when somebody recently in a country of Uganda, they had, there was, some, there was a, a, an American who was kidnapped. Kidnapped. And the kidnappers, whenever they kidnap somebody, what do they want? They want a ransom. Jesus Christ was our ransom. And in this night, as we're talking about the Passover, the institution of the past, first Passover, that lamb was a ransom. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1, 7, in him we have redemption. In whom? In Christ, in the Lamb, we have redemption through his blood. Amen. The blood, somebody say blood. blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to riches of his grace. Jesus was our substitute. He died, for, he died our death for us. Jesus did what? He died my death. So that I, I, could, I, shall, I shall never die again. I shall never die. That's why he says, you know, when, when people just uh, change addresses and they graduate from, from earth to, to heaven, we, we call it death. That's, it's not death. It's, it's graduation. You've graduated to another realm. Hallelujah. That's what he said. Anybody who believes in me, though he dies, he does not what? He never dies. He shall live forever. So Jesus died my death that I may live forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. If I were you, I would clap for that. <laughs> he suffered my judgment that I may never be judged again. First Peter 2.24. He bore our sins in his body on the tree that we may die to sin and live righteousness. Life righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. Hallelujah. Let's go back to, into uh, Exodus as we wind up. Verse 7. Verse 7 to 13 is very important. Hallelujah. They shall put the what? The blood where? On the doors of their doors, the posts and the, their lintels. However, however good, however powerful the, that blood is or was, it was ineffective for them if it was not applied on the wall, on the doors. It called for obedience. Somebody say obedience. It calls for obedience. It says, then you shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire. Roasted in fire. Jesus Christ was roasted. The lamb, Jesus Christ was roasted. Hallelujah. Somebody say, what? He was roasted? Yes, he was. When you appear before some, you know, when we are in school, or even up to now, when you, are, when you appear before your boss and he's reprimanding you over something, what do you say? The boss roasted me, you know. Jesus Christ was roasted. As we read in the previous scriptures, as Pastor Joe was reading for us, he was taken to Caiaphas. Caiaphas was, he was taken to Herod. He was taken to Pontius Pilate. He was taken all over the place being roasted. Are you the son of God? Are you the king of the Jews? All this, he was being roasted. Being roasted talks about arduous, arduous, arduous pain. 
Jesus Christ was, uh, uh, he was smitten, he was slapped, he was flogged. All that is roasting. Because after being hit, all the, you know, he hadn't even eaten that day, you know. The whole night. He's being taken up and down. He was fatigued. He could not sleep. He's being flogged. As he's being, you know the flogs of the, of the Romans, the Romans flog, the, the Roman flog. That one, that one was deadly. The Roman whip was something else. At the end of every week of, 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 the, of the throngs, of the, of the threads, they would attach metal, they would attach glass. So whenever they would slash, they would lash somebody on the, on the back, these pieces of metal would dig deep into the flesh. And as he pulls it out, it would rip out the flesh as well. And this is happening for how many, how, how many lashes did, was he? How many lashes? Somebody? How many? 39. So you can imagine, 39 of these lashes, what is, hap- what, what is remaining on his back? Uh, uh, what, what remains at his back? What would happen is that, you know, this man would be fl- bleeding. That is it there. That is it. That's the weeping. He would be bleeding profusely. At times, some of his, of, of his organs would now be, be, be bare. Just imagine that. He had gone through all that. And you tell him to carry his cross on that back that is bleeding. My goodness. The blood is flowing. Even before he got to Calvary, the blood was flowing. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all, all that was for me, for you and me. That, that's why we cannot take for granted. We should not play with salvation. Don't. My friend, don't. Look at, the, look at that. And they would use the, the strongest guys to do it. Hallelujah. Are you still there? All that was for you and me. The blood. Let's go back to the scriptures. Do not eat it raw. So he's being roasted, like I was saying. He's being roasted. To the cross, we know what happened at the cross. You know what happened at the cross? Jesus Christ those nails, we talk about nails. In his, I'm not talking about the nails that we use, that the carpenters use. These are serious spikes that they were using. And these guys were proficient at crucifixion. They knew where it hurts. When they put a nail, not in his hands, but in, when we talk about these, are, these, these are not, we talk about somewhere here. And here there is a serious nerve. Serious nerve. The radium, is it the radium, or the radium, radius nerve? The moment it is hit, my friend. Have you ever hit yourself? Have you ever hit, you know, your, your uncle on a, on, a, on, a, on a metal? What happens? So painful. Now, multiply that with uncountable numbers. That kind of pain. That's why they had to even invent a word to describe that kind of pain. The word is excruciating. In the feet as well. Then they brought this, cro- this crown of thorns and <laughs> on the head. Blood is flowing, my friend. And Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us that, you know, whenever the crucifixion would happen, these guys would want, the, 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 cruci- the guys who were the, the, the crucifiers, they would want to go. And if somebody is not dying, they would help him by dying because if, if, if his bones are intact, he will keep, you know, doing this and doing that, doing this and doing that. That keeps him taking in air and he it prolongs his life. So what they would do, they would come and break the leg. So that movement is no longer there. You understand? So by the, by the time they come to Jesus to break his leg, Jesus had already given his life away. Nobody killed him. That's why he says in this portion of scripture, do not eat it raw, nor boil it at all with water, but roast in fire. Its head with its leg and its entrails. Uh-huh. Uh, go back. Okay. You shall, not, you shall let none of them remain. I, I wanted that scripture where it says you shall, you shall not break its leg. Is, was it there? Did you see it anywhere? Was, then they shall eat the flesh on that night roasted in fire with unleavened bread with bitter herbs that they shall eat. They shall eat it. Bitter herbs. What are bitter herbs? Why bitter herbs? Bitter herbs so that they may f- always remember where God has brought them from, the bitterness of 
their slavery. Then they shall eat uh, the flesh on that night, roast it in fire with unleavened bread and with herbs, and they shall eat it. Uh-huh. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it in sh- morning you shall burn with the fire. And thus, this is how you shall eat it. He even gave them a, mod- a, mo- a manner in which to eat it. They had to eat it tonight as we appear before the table of the Lord. I want in your mind you to be, you know, I want you to, to guard your mind. I want you to guard up your mind. Guard up your mind. I'm not talking about J G U A D. I'm talking about G I A D. G I R D. Guard your mind. You know, as though you as though, as, as, as though you are going on a journey. Guard your mind, preparing to move from one location to another. There's going to be a shifting as we take the bread and the wine. He told them to do what? To eat prepared. Fasten your belts. Put on your sandals because something is about to happen. And do not eat slowly. Eat quickly. I've got some people who take their time eating. On this occasion, eat quickly. Because something is about to happen. You don't have time. It's the Lord's Passover. That word Passover means sparing. God is about to spare somebody. It's a night. For them, it was a night. God was telling them, eat quickly, eat quickly, quickly, quickly. With, prepared with your, your sandals on, with your stuff on, because you are about to move. Tonight, he was telling them, it's a night of deliverance. He was telling them, tonight is a night of, of a new creation. It was a night that he was drawing a nation out of a nation. That was the birth of the nation of Israel. That night. A night of redemption from the grip of the Pharaoh and his taskmasters. A night of freedom. A night when chains will fall. A night when the enemy would be hit so hard that he would just let go. Tonight, somebody's enemy is being hit so hard and you are being released. I hear chains falling. I hear chains falling. I hear chains falling. I hear chains falling. The enemy is, you are becoming too hot for the enemy to handle. Poof. Have you ever handled somebody something that's a saucepan that is too hot? I don't care what is in that saucepan. I do not care what is in that saucepan. The impulse is what? Release. <laughs> something you have cooked for hours, you just... Hallelujah. That was their night. Tonight, you are being free. Tonight, we eat of the lamb. We eat of the bread. We eat of the word. Jesus Christ is the word. He says, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from my mouth. It was a night of independence. Tonight, I am declaring independence in people's lives tonight in the name of Jesus. Independence from the enemy. It's a night of celebration. Hallelujah. All this was because of a lamb. But for us, it is because of the Lamb. Hallelujah. The Lamb, who is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I can picture in this meal, as I picture a family, the father is saying, you know what, children, just dig in quickly. From tonight, we cannot cannot be slaves anymore. From tonight, I'm no longer a slave to my neighbor. From tonight, I'm no longer a slave to Pharaoh. From tonight, I am free. As they are eating, I picture one of the sons saying, oh, my son, oh, you still, you, you, your back is still fresh from, from the lashes of the taskmaster this afternoon. Son, I tell you, not anymore. Not anymore. Your taskmaster will not lay a hand on you anymore in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I don't know who your taskmaster has been. I don't know who your taskmaster is. But tonight, not another hand on your life. Another. Not another. As they are eating, soon they hear screams, screams all over. They are the neighbor, they hear a scream. Oh, hey. at midnight. Then they scream, then scream after scream, scream after scream. And the children are asking, Lord, Daddy, what's happening? The daddy tells them, keep calm, keep calm, keep calm, keep calm. Why? Because he told them in, in chapter 12, in verse 12, what did he say? For I will pass, I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night. And I will strike Oh, the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both men and the beast. And against, against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. Why? 
because I am the boss. Uh -huh. Now, the blood, somebody say the blood. The blood shall be a sign for you on the house, on your houses, where you are. When I am passing by, and when I do what? See the blood. When I do what? See the blood. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. So at this dinner table, the children are asking, Daddy, what are all those screams outside that I hear? That is telling them, no, 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 keep calm, my children. Keep calm, keep calm. There is blood on our door. There is blood on your door. The door to every person is their hearts. Is there blood on your door? If there's blood on your door, you sh do not fear. I don't care who, what, what laws they, they are flipping up and down. I don't care what they are saying against you. I don't care what the doctors are saying. I don't care what the immigration officers are saying. There is blood on your door. There is blood on your door. And when he sees the blood, he will pass over. He will spare you tonight because of the blood. Somebody is being spared. The blood will save you. The blood will break all the chains. The blood will cause the fetters to fall down. The fetters that had held the children of Israel for 430 years was being dismantled in one single night. Some of us have suffered things that we, don't, we did not even initiate. Things that have been generational in our lineage. Tonight they are being broken. As we eat and partake the blood and the lamb and the bread of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, they are being broken. You are being free. You are starting a new lineage in your life. There are places you are about to start going. There are things you are about to start owning, which your people, your descent, you, they never, they, they, your ancestors never attained. Keep attention here. Forget about the movement. Do not let movement dis, dis, disorganize you. The blood, my friend, will set you free. The blood will bring back everything you lost. The Bible says, as we continue, that after that night, what happened? The Egyptians began to, 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 ask, the children, to, to, to ask the children of Israel, just please, please leave, please, please leave. Help us, please leave, because we are dying. Please leave. The people that were holding them are now releasing. Please, here is my necklace. Here is my gold. Here is this. And they began to take, give them the things that they were not given all these years. Whatever you lost. I hear somebody recovering. Somebody is recovering whatever the enemy stole from you. You must eat quickly tonight because in just around the corner is your deliverance. Just around the corner is your healing in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Close your eyes where you are. Father, we thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Because of your blood that is sprinkled on our hearts, because of your blood that is around us, because of your blood, Father God, we are being passed over tonight. Sickness is passing over in the name of Jesus Christ. Death is passing over in the name above every name. Joblessness is passing over in the name above every name. Paperlessness is passing over in the name above every name. Father God, there is a Passover tonight in somebody's life. Tonight, you are demarcating their past from their future because of the blood. Father, we thank you for the blood. 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 Rebro shika rebro sata ya raba kushata ya ya raba kori ya raba shika ya Rebo seke, receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. Receive your freedom tonight. Receive your freedom. You are going to be doing things. You will start doing things that you never did before. You will go places you never went before. In the name above every name. Tonight is a night of plunder. A night of plundering. You are plundering. You are getting back what you lost. Whatever the enemy took from you. In the name above every name. You are receiving tonight a hundredfold. There is revival. There is recovery. Oh, there is restoration tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned against you, Father Lord, in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. 
where we have minimized you, Lord, where we have minimized, oh, Father, Lord, the sacrifice that you did for us. Tonight, we are no longer slaves, just like those children of Israel, we are no longer slaves to fear. They are no longer slaves, oh, Father, Lord, to, 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 to taskmasters, no longer slaves to hard labor. They became free. You gave them a new name no longer slaves. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave in the name of Jesus Christ to doubt. I'm no longer a slave. I'm no longer a slave. I am free. You are no longer a slave, my friend. Walk in the freedom after being washed by the blood. You're going to appear before the Lord. As you appear before the Lord, I want you to begin to just saying and confess that you are no longer a slave. I'm not a slave anymore. I am free of sickness. I am free of poverty. I am free of shortage. I am free of debts. I am free. Whatever situation it is in your life, whatever taskmasters have they have been in your life, tell them I am free. I am no longer a slave. No longer a slave. No longer a slave. You are free. You are free. You are free. Hallelujah. I'm going to appear before the Lord. Now we appear before the Lord. At his table, we want to confess. I want to lead you in a prayer of confession. Just close your eyes wherever you are. Prepare your hearts. This is not.